This episode of Texella is sponsored by 23andMe. Anthony posts on Facebook, paste pad or grease. I have a new MOBO and I'm going to overclock the thing to the max. Uh, both chips in the board can push out. What do you guys use? A water cooled or nitrogen cooled? <laughs> or what compound should I use? Or or simply what? How do you gonna how are you gonna cool a CPU? So That's a good thermal question. compound, whether it's grease, paste, pad, or just a dollop of mustard, isn't nearly as important as applying it correctly. If you've never upgraded the cooler on your CPU, it's a great way to quiet down a system with a stock Intel or AMD cooler. The compound though is engineered to make sure the air liquid coolers are more efficient. They eliminate air gaps between the top of the processor and the bottom or the cooling plate on your cooling device. Device. Um, basically, just to help to move heat off the CPU or GPU into the air. Really, it is more important to apply most thermal compounds correctly. Just it's, it's putting it on correctly and putting it on thin and doing it right is way more important than whose grease or pad you use. Paste, totally. grease, they work just fine. Matter of fact, so does mustard. Seriously, check out Hardware Secrets. They, have, they, they used to do this amazing annual roundup. I'm not joking, they ran mustard and chocolate and mayonnaise and toothpaste alongside dozens of thermal compounds. <laughs> My beloved and reasonably priced Arctic Silver 5 did just fine, and matter of fact, so did mustard and mayonnaise. They did as well and better than some pricey thermal compounds. So, liquid nitrogen. Now, as far as Nitro G or liquid and air coolers, nitrogen is for fun. It's single use and it's expensive to keep around, and it's kind of dangerous to screw around with, so you're going to hit pause pretty quick. So for setting your overclocking records, yeah, that would be the way to go. Or for making ice cream even, or, or freezing flowers that you can whack folks in the face with. Look for an episode of that on Distort on testtube.com, along with the one where Patrick <laughs> is messing around with potatoes, carbon dioxide, and tennis ball cannons. Liquid cooling, on the other hand, is a great way to move a lot of heat off your CPU, and it's super easy if you get something like that. This and? is one of uh, Corsair's hydro sealed kits. They go from mild, low noise, low speed, single 120 millimeter fans to dual 140 millimeter fans. They're pre filled, they're sealed, they're guaranteed. You even have a pad already attached. Yeah, and basically. Compound on it. You know, they come with all the attachments you need for a laundry list of CPUs. And it's a lot easier than what I've done in the past, which is spending a couple hundred dollars on a custom cold plate and pump and tubing for plumbing. And in my case, a car radiator, because frankly, tiny PC cooling radiators are for suckers. Ah. I had a big old electric fan on a freaking V6 radiator attached to the outside of a case. It was amazing. Here's Wacky. the reality check, though. Um, if you... Ugh, most of the super quiet air-cooled fans you can pick up today, even the inexpensive ones, have more than enough cooling to keep a stock or overclock CPU within its TDP, its thermal envelope. Some can even do it for under 40 bucks. I have air cooling on most of my machines. Hard OCP has some of the best CPU cooler testing around. So the Arctic uh, Cooling Freezer 13 that's inside of this case offers one of the best dollar to performance ratio deals. And it's within a few degrees of some air cooler and water cooler combinations that cost twice as much. So seriously, if you go up to Hard OCP, this is one of their favorites, the Thermalrite True Spirit 120M CPU Air Cooler Review. But you start looking at these numbers, this is one of the most expensive ones out there, the, the Silverstone HE01 High. And for stock, not overclocked, you're looking at pretty standard, like, you know, 52 to 48 degrees, 50 degrees, 52 degrees. These are negligible differences. Things change a little bit when you're overclocking. Okay, so the Silverstone HE01 uh, does the best job, 65, 68 degrees on high speed, 61 to 64, high speed means it's louder. But look at that, it's still only about five or six degrees cooler than a, uh, a, a, a cooler that costs uh, a, a half or a third of the price, or did when it was first released. So 61, 64, 65, that's a $70 cooler. This is a $30 cooler, you know what I mean? Um, I just go, you know, I'll be honest with you, I just go with the inexpensive Arctic Freezer Pro and yeah. I get good results and I spent like 35 bucks on it. I've used those before too with great oh, results. Me. Let me read that correctly. The Arctic Cooling Freezer 13 Pro. Damn straight, <laughs> man. Hey, for me at home though, uh, I have to say, I have a workstation now that's four years old running an overclocked i7 part and the cooler that I use is from Noctua. Very similar to the one I have up right now, the NH-U12P. Uh, it's about a $70 cooler. It is quiet, it's efficient. And it keeps, like I said, my overclocked i7 has been happy going on four freaking years now. So I'm pretty, pretty pleased with that. Now, for builds on a budget, I have to just recommend Cooler Master has their Hyper 12. They have a bunch of Hyper 212 models. Uh, the Plus one you can usually find for under 30 bucks. Significantly more efficient than a stock Intel cooler in my experience as well, not breaking the bank. And a pro tip for y'all, any cooling system that involves fans, it could be a radiator or just straight air cooling, 
Well, they require regular dusting to keep everything running at optimal efficiency. Now, when you're picking a PC case, consider the design features that effectively make uh, air intake filters that are not only easy to remove, but also easy to clean. I have a case at home that has great removable filters except for the one main filter on the top of the case where I pretty much have to disassemble the thing and that's just it's awfully ridiculous. And for dusting out computers, man, my tool of choice continues to be the Metro Vacuum ED500 DataVac Electric <laughs> Duster. This is so much better than cans of compressed gas. Uh, you can actually see this in action. We have this on Techzilla episode 311. Uh, pro tip, drag that PC outside before attacking the dust buildup inside. <laughs> It, it, it will blow it all out. And be sure to check the front of the case, too, if yeah. there's a front attached panel. Usually stuff can get trapped in there as well. But removable filters are the big one for me. That keeps the inside just about dust-free. I'm waiting for them to arrive. We ordered one. But somebody actually sent a link to essentially it's a sack. Oh. A filter sack that wraps around a PC case. I think those work great, too. And yeah. I think that's a great idea for just, especially if you're just in a nightmare environment where, you know what, I want the whole thing just encased in something that'll trap those particles. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Amazon.com, Newegg.com, Tiger Direct. Um, by the way, also, if you want to go to one of the great all-time sources of CPU cooling gear, FrozenCPU.com, um, they have lots of shiny toys for your PC. Good stuff. Yeah. Let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors. Have you ever been curious about your genetic background, about what you might learn from your DNA? I was, and that's why I use 23andMe. 23andMe enables anyone to explore their DNA. It's based on a saliva analysis of approximately 1 million data points in your DNA. Customers receive over 200 personalized reports that cover health risks, physical traits, carrier status for conditions that could be passed on to children, and more. 23andMe first offered their personal genome service in November 2007 for $999, and it only provided 14 reports. But today you can get over 200 reports, all for only $99. Isn't the evolution of technology great? Now, it may sound intimidating, but 23andMe makes the whole process very simple. First, you buy a DNA kit online, and then you mail your saliva sample, postage is included, and after a few weeks, you receive over 200 health, trait, and ancestry reports. Heck, I've used it, and I can't recommend it enough, so what are you waiting for? Get started today. Check out 23andMe.com slash Techzilla to learn more.